ETH is easy. It's like, this is the internet of value. We need to own a stake in it. And they're all building applications on ETH, and they're all looking at this. And ETH is more of a gateway drug to the kind of things that they're interested in. Think of Ether like a, a giant foundation, a platform where you can keep building applications. You can keep providing smart contracts. You, it's going to be the center of decentralized finance, which means that you're going to bypass those banks, bypass those companies, and just deal directly through the technology. Um, I read somewhere that you put five million into Ethereum. Is that correct? I'm not saying how much I'm putting into it, but I've got 100% of my liquid net worth in crypto and about 70% of it's in Ethereum, probably more now, probably about 80 something percent is in Ethereum. Would you regard so, yourself yeah. as an um, Ethereum maximist? Oh, no, no, it's the biggest bet I've ever taken. I'm not an Ethereum maximist. I just think it's the best risk adjusted reward. I'm an investor. Yes, I love the space. I'm passionate about the space overall and the ethos and the culture and everything that's happening. But what I'm trying to do is maximize my returns. And yes, could I make more money in Solana? Possibly, but the, it's riskier. Ethereum is so clear with the restricted supply. There's a supply crunch. Everybody's staking their ETH. Everything's being locked up on smart contracts. So to me, and I'm seeing institutions coming into Ethereum because they feel more comfortable there than they do with Bitcoin because of the issues we talked about, the, the culture within the community. So I'm like... This is the best bet to me. So that's that's so I'm not an ETH maximalist in any way. In fact, I own tons of altcoins, stuff like Solana, Avalanche, Terra, and I think everybody's doing great work. And the world should be about all of us doing great work and working together because the whole space is going to go up a hundred x. And if Bitcoin ends up being not forty five percent of it, but ends up being twenty percent of it, but the whole space has gone a hundred x, it works for everybody. I just want to let everyone know that um, we have a few minutes left, so please feel free to leave your questions in the chat um, and I'll ask Ralph since um, we have him. So you, you mentioned 100x, which is incredible. It, it, where do you see that in the next 10 years, the next 15 years? So this is the fastest adoption of any technology in all recorded human history. So it's growing at 113% a year, which is twice the speed the internet was when it had 150 million users. You extrapolate that out, you get to a billion people by 2024. If you look at it in terms of market cap, it's about 20, uh, 2 trillion today, a bit over that. Most other assets are around 200 trillion, so equities, bonds, real estate. So if this is the asset class that we think it is, and it's growing at this rate, then 200 trillion is a reasonable estimate by the end of the decade. So that's an entire asset class market cap going up 100 fold. We've seen that in a stock before. We've seen that in a few things, but never an entire asset class. And so it's the biggest opportunity I've ever, ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, people in the comments are, are um, taken aback by your, your prediction. So uh, we have some questions coming through. Um, so one question that we have is, Raul, would you have suggestions for um, the youngsters and startups to get their projects off the ground? How should they structure their um, blockchain business in terms of getting the right partners um, um, and investors, um, especially when it comes to compliance and governance and things like that? I think the best way for people who are, aren't super connected in the space, because there's a bunch of people who know everybody and it's much easier for them. Of but there's a lot of incubator firms, people like Outlier in the UK, um, who incubate projects and will help you. So they will tell you whether you've got a good idea or not. They're kind of onboarding 100 um, firms at a time, and there's several of these. So, so go to one of the incubator projects, seek their advice, and they will help you through it all. Because there's a lot to learn and it's really difficult. And if you're not super connected, it feels daunting. But there are people who are there to help who are set up to do it. Yeah, and I also just want to um, go back actually a second because you mentioned that institutions are looking towards Ethereum more than Bitcoin, which um, not a, which we're not, we're not talking about enough. And you mentioned it's because of the the toxicity, but it has to be something else, surely. I'm sure people aren't, you know, big players aren't afraid of a bit of toxicity. Well, they don't like it because it reflects on them. Um, so they don't like to be overly involved in the space in that respect. But the reality is it's very easy for them to grasp the concept of new technology. So, you know, as opposed to having to be an investor and talk about, you know, the, the, um, 
the devaluation of money and fiat money and all of this stuff, which is kind of a complicated narrative for a financial institution to have. ETH is easy. It's like, this is the internet of value. We need to own a stake in it. Um, so that's why, and they're all building applications on ETH and they're all looking at this. And ETH is more of a gateway drug to the kind of things that they're interested in, which is, you know, smart contracts, um, and things like NFTs, what that can do for their business. You know, could you put insurance contracts on NFTs? All of this is intellectually very interesting for the existing financial system, and existing investors. And in terms of third world markets, how do you see um, this entire industry playing out? I know there's a lot of adoption happening, um, of course, in Latin America and Africa. Do you see them as pioneers with this technology? Yeah, they will be because they can they can jump ahead and we're seeing this we saw it in kenya when it started with m-pesa we're seeing it in in india where they kind of leaped ahead on a whole bunch of stuff i think this is great and if let's go back to the nfts now somebody in sudan can mint an nft and earn eth right they couldn't do that in the world before because there was no ability for them to work in international trade without all these restrictions and bank controls and all this other stuff so it's actually quite a big leveler and the metaverse is a leveler because education is going to go into the metaverse as well and that means that you can educate people in different countries who wouldn't get access to those lecturers or or those other fellow students who are alongside each other it's it's amazing yeah, it's insane if you think education is going to go into the metaverse. So I wonder how much of our time do you think we're actually going to spend inside there? Sort of well, creeps me ask, out. Let me ask you the question, how much time do you spend on Zoom? Oh my God, don't ask me that. Because that makes you think I'm going to spend so much time in the metaverse. Well, you are, because it's all going to be the same thing. So your Zoom right now exists as a separate app. But in the metaverse, if, you, if you're in 3D, most of us won't be because nobody wants to walk around with goggles all the time. But it'll be part of an experience, like a 3D experience on your screen, where you can have your Zoom thing up, you can have other applications, and it all works in a better way. So it's just going to be a natural way for you to be. You're not always going to be living in the avatar world, where you're representing yourself digitally. You can represent the space that you operate within, your computer screens, all of the things that you use. Again, there is no kind of final state. Everybody thinks, oh, we're all going to be walking around with VR headsets and it doesn't have to be that. It's it's every digital experience and how it all seamlessly comes together. Because right now, for example, if I wanted to send you a, a Bitcoin via this Zoom, we can't. No. But in the future, it'll be super easy because they'll all be integrated. That's what a metaverse is. It's a really optimistic um, approach towards it because there's a lot of concern that we will be um, opting out of the real world and going headfirst into the metaverse because people do see it like